Hello, and welcome to presentation two of our boat safety class. This presentation is going to do with things that we do before we leave when we're heading out on the lake. The next few presentations are going to be organized in that way, kind of chronologically. What do you do before you leave? What do you do when you're trailering? What do you do to launch the boat? What do you do when you're boating? Etc. So this first one has to do with things we're going to do to prepare before we leave. And we just have some basic things we're going to talk about, some general preparation before we leave, uh, what to do to get the trailer ready, and what to do to get the boat ready. Okay, so the first thing that we need to mention is that you need to file a float plan. Okay, you've got to tell somebody where you're going and how long you expect to be there and when you get back. It doesn't have to be fancy. It could be something as simple as a text, um, but it really is important uh, for safety reasons, okay? Um, and then it, because it's so simple to send a text, there's really no excuse for not doing this. And I also like it when students check in by text periodically during the day. That way we just know that everything is fine and nobody's in any kind of trouble. Now the next thing you talk about is just some general things that you need to put on your checklist. And these will become second nature to you the more you go out and work in the field. But just think about the things that you will need so that you can get your work done that day. Stuff that you don't want to have to turn around and come back to the boat ramp for or back all the way to the, to the station for. So for example, make sure you've got your permits, make sure you've got your data sheets, make sure you've got lunch, certainly make sure you've got water so you stay hydrated, make sure you've got sunscreen, those kind of things should go on your checklist. Now we're ready to talk about what do you have to do to prep the trailer and get the trailer ready. Um, not a whole lot here. Some of the things we've already talked about, just check the air in the tires, make sure that they've got plenty of pressure, make sure the spare is, is aired up as well. But another thing to think about is make sure that you have a trailer jack and um, a lug nut wrench somewhere. Probably these will be in the truck that you're using to pull the boat. Uh, it's something that you just need to check and make sure you've got it. Make sure that the wrench fits the lug on the trailer. Once you know you've got it, then you're fine. But it would be a real bummer to need these things and find out that you don't have them. Uh, this is a good time to check the trailer hubs. And if you haven't greased them in a while, just put a couple of squirts of grease into them before you head out. Of course, check and make sure that the lights are okay so that when you're going down the road, you've got good trailer lights. And then you're ready to check on the boat, okay? So, uh, basic things, again, that should be second nature to you after a while. Make sure you've got a key for the outboard. This is very easy to forget and obviously is very important. So, get into the habit of checking for that. Uh, check if the battery has a charge. Uh, you don't want to get to the ramp and find out that your motor won't turn over because the battery's dead. If the battery is dead or is very weak, it would be a good. You can swap it out for a different battery, um, or you can put it on a charger. Of course, if you put it on a charger, that means that you've got to wait for a while for it to charge up. So this is something you might want to think about the day before you go out. It also um, wouldn't hurt to just throw an extra 12 volt battery in the back of the truck just in case you find out that the original battery is too weak. As always, check the oil uh, in the motor every time you use it. So do that before you leave. And also make sure you've got enough gas. Okay? The rule of thumb is that you want to use a third a tank of gas, a third of your gas to get out, a third of your gas to get back, and that leaves a third of your gas in reserve. Okay? You don't want to use half your gas to get where you're going because then you'll have only just enough gas to make it back. But of course, if the wind picks up or you're going against the current, you might not have enough gas to get back. So always think a third, a third, a third, and make sure you've got plenty of gas so you don't get stranded. Always make sure you've got the drain plugs. They should be in the boat, but just get in the habit of making sure they're there. Obviously, you've got to have those. So now's a good time to talk about the safety gear that you're going to need to be a legal boater. 
All right, so we've got some things that you have to have in order to be legal, and we've got some things that are suggested that you don't necessarily have to have, but we suggest you have. Let's talk first about the required safety gear, the things you must have to be legal. First off, you've got to have a life vest for everyone on board. All right? And not only do you have to have life vests, when you're underway, they have to be accessible. Okay? You can't shove them under a compartment. You can't shove them under the bow. They have to be readily accessible um, or otherwise you're not legal. Now, um, if you're using our boats, you should have the life jackets on at all time. Okay? Uh, that's just the most safe thing to do and we require that you have those life jackets on at all times. You also need a throwable life preserver. This is usually just like a seat cushion or a boat cushion but um, all of the boats that we're going to be using out in the field are big enough that you have to have at least one throwable life preserver. You need a sounding device, something to signal other boats with. If you have a motor on the boat, you have to have a fire extinguisher. And if you have a fire extinguisher, of course it has to be fully charged. We talked about this in the last presentation, but you need to make sure that it has a full charge on it and this goes for any motored boat. So even if you had a boat, like a kayak, that only had a trolling motor on it, you still have to have a fire extinguisher. You know, a trolling motor can overheat and catch on fire. So make sure you have that if you have any kind of motor on the boat. You need to have your battery covered and it needs to be secured. Okay? And if you have a kill switch, with a lanyard on your outboard motor, you have to be using it when you're underway. And I'll show you an example of this here in a second. And if you're going to be out after dark, you need to have running lights so that other boats can see you and they can see what direction you're moving. Let's talk about a couple of these things in a little bit more detail. Sounding device uh, can be something as simple as a whistle. Uh, you can have an air horn. Um, sometimes the boats have a built-in horn, but you've got to have something that you can give a blast on so that you can signal to other boats. This is an example of a battery box which allows you to cover the battery and allows you to secure it. Now, this is very important. I think a lot of people don't take this very seriously. But what would happen if you didn't secure and cover the battery? If you've got the battery sitting there with these exposed poles, and then you dropped something that touched both poles simultaneously. Say you dropped a metal clipboard or you dropped a wrench. Or say the battery got knocked over and both those poles touched the side of the metal bolt at the same time. You'd get a spark and you'd get a spark right back in the back of the boat where the gas cans are. Okay, So it's very important that you have the battery covered and secured. Now this is an example of what I said I meant by a kill switch with a lanyard. Not all outboards have this, but if your outboard has it, you have to be using it when you're underway. And basically this attaches to you, usually you attach it to your uh, life vest. And the purpose of this is that if you go overboard, it will kill the outboard. So if you happen to go overboard, one, the boat won't just keep going without you, but two, more importantly, if this happens, the boat usually will start to make a big circle and it will just come right around and there's a very good chance it's going to run you over. So that's what the purpose of the kill switch is for. Now here is how the running lights need to be arranged if you're out after dark. Okay? The stern light at the back of the boat needs to be just a single white light. In the front of the boat, you need to have uh, the bow light which is half red and half green. The red port, the red part has to be to the port, which is the left side of the boat, and the green part has to be to the starboard, which is the right side of the boat. So in this way, if another boat sees you, they can tell which direction you're traveling because they can tell where the front of the boat is and then the back of the boat is, and they can tell how they're approaching you. Are they approaching you from the port or from the starboard? And this will be important for determining who is stand on and who's give way. This is something that we'll talk about when we talk about sort of the rules of the road later on. 
At any rate, the important thing is, is you've got to have the light on the front and the back, and you've got to have them arranged in this particular way. Now note that these laws vary based upon the size of the boat. So bigger boats are going to require, for example, more fire extinguishers. Okay? Smaller boats might not require a throwable. The uh, safety equipment that I just gave you now is for the typical boat that we're going to use, and it's a good starting point. But be aware that if you're in a larger boat, you're probably going to have more requirements. Also be aware that just because you're a state employee, that does not exempt you from these laws. You still have to have all the legal boating equipment, and it's just a smart thing to do because it's a uh, good safety practice. Now, there's some other things that are not required to be legal, but are good suggestions, all right? The first is a marine radio or a cell phone. Well, most of you are probably going to be carrying a cell phone with you, okay? And that's fine, but realize that cell phone service out in the field and out on the lake can be spotty. And so it's not the best thing to rely upon for safety. A marine radio is going to be uh, more safe because it's going to be monitored, it's going to um, have coverage wherever you're at. The only thing about a marine radio is there are some unique protocols for how you use the radio, which channels you use. Um, so if you're going to use a marine radio, you need to study up on that and know how to use it. Another advantage of a, of a marine radio is, is that they usually have a weather channel on there, and so you can get weather alerts. Um, again, you can say, well, I get the weather app on my phone. But if you don't have cell phone service, then the phone is no good. Um, a GPS and a depth finder are also good things to have. Usually, of course, they're going to be built in together. Uh, this just helps you to keep track of your position, obviously. Um, a toolbox is always a good suggested thing to bring along. Something's going to break down. It'd be nice to have some tools. First aid kit. Uh, sometimes you're going to be out there working with you know, hooks and knives and things, you might get a cut. Uh, a paddle is always a good idea. You know, you're probably not going to be able to paddle your way back to shore, but it can be useful for controlling the boat, um, and it might help you out in a, in a pinch. Uh, an anchor is a good idea. Uh, maybe signal flares. Signal flares, if you're going to use signal flares, again, make sure you know how to use them. They have expiration dates on them. So these are things that you don't have to have, but would be a good idea. Okay, so um, that's just the basics of the things you need to think about before you leave. Uh, these things will become second nature the more you do it. So then, that's all I have for this presentation. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you later.